Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the next installment of our Android Tip Calculator Tutorial. Okay, what are we going to do today? We're going to write our own code. And I'm going to delete these comments since I don't really need them for now. Also, one thing I noticed while I was preparing to do this video, if you go back to your XML UI layout, find the Add Diner button right here. And make sure it has an ID of add diner button. Uh, it was always supposed to have this, but uh, I'm not sure if I actually mentioned this in the videos. I might have skipped it by accident. But yeah, make sure it has an ID of add diner button. Because what we're going to do in this video is we're going to make the, when you click the add diner button, we're going to make it add another diner to your app. Okay, so let's get started with that. In order for us to be able to add a diner to the app, and by that I mean add another row to main table that says that's for another customer, we need to be able to access main table in our Java code. And to access it, we have to reference the ID. So let's start. Uh, you're going to want to write this piece of code right here. Uh, Okay, private table layout main table. What this says is this line declares a variable. A variable is a word that references a, an object. Uh, it's not an object by itself, but you can just sort of think of it as the object because that's sort of the easy way to do it when you're just beginning. So let's create a variable and we call it main table. And I use the same name as the ID. And it's going to be a private variable, don't worry too much about what that means, but basically means other classes can't mess with it. Uh, it's going to be a private variable, and it's going to be of the type table layout. So it's going to be a table layout object, and it's going to be called main table, and it's a variable. Now, what about this variable? Add the following line to your onCreate method. Okay. May oh, and while you're at it, hover over table layout and go ahead and import the code that you need to make this work. So we said take the variable main table and set it equal to uh, this thing over here. Now equals in uh, in coding usually means assign this variable to this object. So make this variable reference this thing. Before this, all we did was declare. We said there is a variable called main table, but we didn't say what main table was. Here we say assign the variable main table that we declared earlier to this object. And what is this object? The method here, find view by ID is inherited from activity. And it says, whatever argument you passed me, find the object that has that ID and return or tell us what that object is. And we gave it an ID of main table. So it says, find me by ID. What ID? Main table. So it finds the, the object that has an ID of main table, which was our table, and it gives it back. The thing is, what it gives back is always the view object version of this thing here. And we don't actually want the view version. Remember that a table layout is a table layout, but it's also sort of technically a view object as well, simply because it inherits from the view object. So whatever you put in here, it's just gonna give you the view version. And we want the table layout version, because if we don't have that version of main table, we're not gonna be able to do all the stuff that has to do with tables, uh, like adding rows and stuff. So we have to cast whatever comes out of here as a table layout, and what that, the, or what that is means is put this in front of uh, the code right here and it'll make whatever find view by ID gives us and it'll give us the table layout version of this. So that's what casting is. So this whole thing says, okay, take the variable main table that we declared up here and assign it to whatever find view by 
ID returns using this ID and make sure it is the table layout version of that. Okay? And now we can use main table to change our table whenever we want in our Java code. Let's do the same thing for our uh, diamond button. So private image button add diner button. And import image button. Then down here it's pretty much the same thing. Add diner button equal to the image button version that find view by ID gives us from the ID add diner button. Again, you'll notice I'm just using this variables uh, as the same as the ID. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Okay, so nothing does really say there. It's the exact same thing. And uh, yeah, that, that's it. We do the same thing as main table, but for add diner button. So let's move on. Now that we can access this code, we need to program what happens when the user clicks on add diner button. But how do we know when the user clicks on anything? Well, by default, an activity that we, which is again what we inherited from, does not have the power to notice when the user clicks stuff. So, in order to notice, we need to, the easiest way for us to notice when a user clicks stuff is to inherit the power from another uh, class again. Unfortunately, in Java, we can only extend one class right here. So, since we extended activity, and activity does not have the power to listen to user clicks, we can't extend another class. On the right side, what we can do is we can implement an interface called onClickListener. So, what is an impl or what is an interface? Let's open Paint and do a quick mini lesson. Or you know what? I'm just going to look at the infographic here. So, essentially, there are three class-like things in Java. There's a concrete class which you know, it has attributes and it has methods, and all of those methods are implemented, or they're defined. Okay? And anything that inherits from a concrete class is also a concrete class. There are also abstract classes, which has attributes and methods, but at least one of those methods is unimplemented. And what that means is, the abstract class says, okay, I have this method, but I have no code for it. I don't know what it does. You can, if you inherit from me, you can decide what it does, or you can also leave it unimplemented. If you decide what it does, then you become a concrete class. If you don't, and you leave it unimplemented like me, then you are also not. Then if you inherit from me, then you're also an abstract class. And lastly, there's an interface. An interface is not a class, and it does not have any attributes. It only has methods. And none of those methods are implemented. They're all empty. They're, they're just... They just tell you what it can do, it doesn't tell you how you do it. If you inherit from it, you have to go and implement all the methods, and you have to say what all of them do. Okay? So here's sort of an example. Let's say we have a person class, and we have a soldier class, and we extend from person to create our basic soldier class. So we have all the things that person has, and we also have some unique soldier stuff like uh, uh, fighting, which is a method. But say we want to, well, we want our soldier class to also be able to use weapons, uh, but we don't want to write the code out our, or ourselves for, or we don't want to write too much code for all the weapons that we want to use. We want to use code that other people have already written. So we can find classes like Sniper and uh, close combat, and maybe these guys, these interfaces, already have stuff like uh, maybe these interfaces that we implement already have methods like that we can use. So now we get these methods for our class. So we get it. We extend all the attributes and methods from the person class, and then we also implement all the methods in all these interfaces, and we can have an unlimited amount of interfaces, unlike classes. So then we can just keep implementing other people's stuff, and that's how you inherit stuff when you've already 
uh, used up your maximum slot of one class. So you use interfaces. So we're going to use the, where is it? And I have another infographic here on my website if you want me to take a look at that. Or you can just pause the video. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to implement the onclick listener. The onclick listener is an interface that has a method that lets us listen to uh, user clicks. And now that we've implemented it, it, our main activity is also able to listen to user clicks. Now it's underlined, so hover over it and import the onclick listener. There's two versions. Make sure you do the view version right there. Now it'll underline main activity, and like I said, whenever you use an interface, you have to implement all of its methods, since all of its methods are by default unimplemented. And that's just the rule, you have to implement all of them. So it says add unimplemented methods. So Eclipse can do that for you. And it basically only has one. The method that onclick listener has is onclick. So what is onclick? Onclick, I'm just gonna delete that comment. Onclick is a piece of code that just like how onCreate runs automatically when your app is created, or when the activity is created, onClick runs automatically when something you're listening to is clicked on. Okay? So how do you get main activity to listen? Because by default you don't listen to everything that's on the app. You know, that doesn't make sense. You have to make sure, you have to tell main activity to listen to particular things. So let's go here and add another line. Add diner button, and again, since we created, we declared, and we assigned something for this variable, we can now access it in our code. So add dino button dot set this set on click listener, I think is the code. Let me check. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so what this code does is, so we're going to do something to add dino button. What are we going to do to it? And note the notation here, it's you put the variable and then a dot and then the method. We're going to set the onclick listener and then as an argument, this. And that means make main activity listen to add diner button. And every time add diner button is clicked, main activity will know because it is listening to it. Uh, what does this refer to? This refers to whatever class this line of code is in. So this line of code code is in main activity. Uh, so this refers to main activity. And that's good because main activity implements onclick the listener, so it has the power to hear, and now we're telling it to listen to add diner button right here. Okay? And this here refers to the context. And this the context is main activity. Okay, great. Now every time the user clicks add diner button, this code will run automatically. Now what do we want to happen when they click add diner button? Okay, so, oh, whoops. So this is on click and it has an argument called duv. And what this means is the first word describes what the argument has to, what kind, what type the argument has to be. So we want the type to be a view. And then the second word is just a variable that represents the argument in the rest of the code block underneath on click. So we want a view, or we want uh, to pass a view argument, and we're just going to call it b. Now, whenever this code is run automatically by Android when you click something, uh, Android automatically passes whatever was clicked as the argument. So when they click add diner button, main activity will hear it, and then it will start the on click method, and they will pass uh, the add, add diner button, since that was the one that was clicked, as the argument. So v, when add diner button is clicked, is equal to add diner button. Okay. Now, so we have another, so then it runs the code that's in here, and the first line is, if v is equal to add diner button, and then stuff. If is a conditional, which means when the computer gets to this, it determines is what is inside these round brackets true. If it is true, then run the code that is in these curly brackets. If it is not true, skip this entire if block and go to the next line after that, which is nothing. So the computer wants to know if v is equal to the add dynamic button. 
In other words, uh, what did the computer pass to us for the view? Was it add data button or was it another button? If it was another button, don't do anything. But if it was add data button, do the stuff that's inside the if block, which we haven't written yet. Okay, so this just checks that it's add data button, another, not another uh, button that was clicked. Right now, we don't need it since add data button is the only thing that we told main activity to listen to, but later on, we'll have to have it. Uh, okay, so what ha what do we want to do if it is add dining button? Let's just, uh, uh, we'll just chill out for a sec. Okay, so write this code in and import everything that you need to import. Using it loops. And I think that's all we need. So let's, I want to make sure. Yeah, that's all we need. Okay, let's, let's explain what we did and then end this video. So if the button you clicked is add dino button, then do this line. What is this line? This, this right here declares a variable. We declare a variable called row and we call it table row. And notice that on the same line, we actually assign it a value. You can declare something and assign a value on the same line. Um, so here we set it equal to new table row this. So new means we're not going to assign it to uh, a table row that already exists like we did up here. We're going to assign it to a new thing. And this new thing is a table row. And then it has an argument. And the argument is, again, the context, which is main activity. So where do we want to create this new uh, object? We're going to want to create it in main activity. And what is it? It's a table row, and it's a new table row. And we're going to set our uh, variable called table or called row equal to this new table row. Exact same thing here. Uh, we declare an edit text variable, and we assign it the value of a new edit text that is that we create inside main activity. So this part right here actually creates a new object. Just to let you know. Okay, next line. Et one dot set text customer. ET1 is the variable we use up here for the edit text we just created, and we're going to set the text, which by default is, I think, just text, or maybe it's nothing, I don't know. But anyway, we're going to set the text using this function right here to the argument, which is customer. Notice that the word customer has quotations around it. Whenever you have a st character string or a string of letters or numbers in programming, you get that thing is called a uh, a string and it has to be surrounded by quotes. So the set text only takes a string as an argument. So and a string is again a sequence of letters and numbers and punctuation, whatever. Just you know, it's whatever you can type out of your keyboard. But it has to be inside quotes. So we set the text equal to customer, which was a string, and then next we do row dot add view. Okay, that's wrong row.addView et1. So what that means is this row variable, whatever it's referring to, add a view to it using this method. And what view do we want to add? We want to add et1 as the argument. So what this says is add edit text to row. This line right here is basically the functional equivalent of dragging an edit text in the graphical layout onto a row. In, uh, when you're done designing the UI. That's what it does. So we're adding 
BT1 to the row. And then we finish off by... Uh, we finish off by... Sorry, I'm going to run the AVD since I don't want to wait for it at the end. Uh, doing main table, which again we declared and then assign up here. And we add a view to it just like the row. And we put two arguments this time. So you notice we use the same method, but in this one we put one argument, in this one we put two. Methods can have multiple arguments and not all of them are mandatory. Sometimes you have an optional uh, argument like this one for add view is a second optional argument. And if you don't put anything there, uh, a default number is used. So here we didn't put it and they use the default number of zero. Here we put it and, and we set it to two. And what does that two mean? It means make or add row as the third item in main table. If you put or the default value of zero, which refers to the first item, and then if you put one, it's the second item. If you put two, it's the third item. So here we added ET1 as the first item of the row. But we don't actually want row to be the first item of main table because that would make the customer block, if you look over here, if we didn't put that 2 there, it would create a customer block that's at the very top of here before pre-tax bill. We want it to be underneath uh, the first customer. So we have to make it third row because this is the first row, the second row, and we want to create a third row right here. So that's why you pass the argument of 2. So main table, add view, add the row into main table as the third element. So, I think that's all we're going to do for this video. Let's go ahead and test it. Uh, hopefully, if tutorials in the future go faster once we've familiarized ourselves with all the language stuff. And as you can see, it does what we want. Every time we click Add New Diner button, a new customer row is created. And all the other buttons, since we're not listening to them, they still do nothing. Which is good. Okay, uh, I'm gonna end this video right after I do a very quick recap about what we just did. Okay, let's go through this. Uh, so we made some variables, we declared them, we assigned them values so we can use them, we made sure that main activity after implementing on click listener is listening to add diner button, and then we ran, uh, then we write, wrote the code for on click listener or for on click, and if, if whatever was clicked is equal to the add diner button, then create a row and make it a new row. Uh, create a new edit text and then make the edit text say customer, then add the edit text to the row and then add the row to our main table as the third line. Okay, great, end of video.